Good morning all. My name is Chevita. I'm working as a senior statistician at the Noah Nordisk, Bangalore, India. So today I'll be happy to share my research topic on degenerant beta arma and Ashini application for modeling and measurable resistance rate data with zeros or ones. Disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are the views, thoughts and opinions belonging solemnly to the presenter and not necessarily to the presenter's employer or organization or committee or other group or individuals. No data or confidential information belonging to non-Nordisk has been used in this presentation. So before going in detail about the proposed model or Ashini application, let me give a brief introduction to the antimicrobial resistance, which is the ability of a microorganisms to stop an antimicrobial from working against it. As a result, standard treatment becomes ineffective, infection persists and may spread to others. So in the recent year, there has been drastic increase in the AR of in the area of AMR. So according to the WHO study in the year 2018, under the initiative Global Antimicrobial Surveillance System, the most commonly reported pathogens are Escherichia coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumonia, Streptococcus pneumonia, and Salmonella species. And uh, according to the country situation analysis conducted by WHO, the main cause of resistance is inappropriate use of antimicrobial medicine and poor healthcare facilities. So there is an urgent requirement of cost effective strategies to reduce this antimicrobial resistance. So one of the mechanism could be to predict our antimicrobial resistance rate for the future, which can help our healthcare policy makers or um, healthcare providers to formulate better antimicrobial policies to manage this antimicrobial resistance rate. So to understand the stochastic model which is already used in the area of AMR, I have conducted a literature search and I found out Lopez Lozano et al. in the year 2000 for the first time he have introduced autoregressive moving average model in the area of AMR. So he has collected a monthly data on antimicrobial resistance rate from the year July 1991 to December 1998, where he concentrated on the organism Pseudomonas erigenosa resistant to the antibiotic imipenem and gram-negative bacil resistant to the antibiotic septazidine. Here he has considered antibiotic consumption as a covariate. Similarly, K. et al. in 2010, he has concentrated, they have concentrated on the organism Staphylococcus aureus resistant to the antibiotic methicillin, where along with antibiotic consumption, they also concentrated upon hospital stay, bed occupancy rate, and turnover intervals. Similarly, Wilman et al. in 2013, so they have concentrated on the organism Pseudomonas aeruginosa resistant to the different antibiotics and they have considered antibiotic consumption as the covariate. Similarly, few of these studies also used exponential smoothing method. And few of these studies also used logistic regression. So in the year 2000, Atnesius and Copsini, they have also conducted a systematic uh, review, uh, uh, review to understand the models which is already used in the area of AMR. And they also found that most of the studies used a degree moving average model followed by transfer function model and few of these studies also used multiple linear regression model. So uh, the data like antimicrobial resistant rate, when it contains zeros or ones, when the, that is when bacteria is highly susceptible or resistant. So to deal with such kind of data, Ospina and Ferrari in the year 2008 and Kriberi and Neto and Santos in the year 2019, they have introduced inflated beta distribution and inflated Kumaraswamy distribution to deal with the data when it include them when the resistance rate include zeros or ones, which is a mixture of discrete and continuous distribution that is degenerate and beta distribution for inflated beta distribution case 
and degenerate and Kumar Swami distribution for inflated Kumar Swami distribution. So to understand the model which is already developed or introduced in this area, I've conducted a literature search and I found out that Ferrari and Kriber Nato in 2004, they have introduced beta regression modeling for rate or proportion. Where in the year uh, 2012, Ospina and Ferrari, they have introduced a generalized class of 0 or 1 inflated beta distribution. Then in 2013, Mitnick and Bake, they have introduced Kumar Swami distribution, median dispersion, uh, dispersion reparameterization for regression modeling and uh, simulation based estimation. Where Bayer et al. in 2017, they have introduced Kumar Swami autoregressive moving average model. Then in 2015, Lamanchi and Bazin, they have introduced Johnson SB distribution for the regression case. So uh, there are only few limited models are introduced in this area. So there is a uh, research gap or I can say there is a scope for the following models that is inflated beta auto regressive moving average model, inflated Kumar Swami regression model, inflated Kumar Swami auto regressive moving average model, Johnson SB auto regressive moving average model, inflated Johnson SB regression model and inflated Johnson SB auto regressive moving average model. So the objective of this study is to develop a stochastic model for time series data in the interval 0, 0,1 where either 0 or 1 is included and to apply the developed model to a real life data. So here I'll be concentrating on the data and microbial resistance and to develop an r application for the same. So to uh, give a description about the data, the data was on uh, the data on antimicrobial resistance that is on the bacteria E. coli isolated from blood culture showing variable susceptibility result to different antimicrobial agent has been collected from microbiology laboratory of a tertiary care hospital Urpi district Karnataka for the year 2011 to 2019. So to obtain this uh, data, institutional ethical clearance has been obtained from Kasturba Medical College and Kasturba Hospital Institutional Ethic Committee. So the laboratory had tested E. coli against 12 different antimicrobial agents and the results were interpreted as either susceptible or resistant. So for my data, as I'm concentrating on antimicrobial resistant rate, have obtained a resistant rate by considering the number of E. coli isolates that were resistant to a particular antimicrobial agent divided by total number of E. coli uh, during that time interval. So among 12 antimicrobial agents, I concentrated on four antibiotics that is amoxicillin clonic acid, cefaparazin, celebectum, cefiroxin and meropenem. So uh, these uh, are the four antibiotics uh, for, for which the resistance rate was in the interval 0, 0,1 where either 0 or 1 is included and which is also time dependent. So this is the, uh, this Excel sheet uh, provide you the glimpse of the data, how it looked like. So as I mentioned, I'll be developing a, a model which can uh, accommodate, uh, which can analyze the data, which includes 0 and 1, where either 0 or 1 is included. So I've introduced degenerate beta autoregressive moving average model, which is a mixture of degenerate and beta distribution. So the construction of the model is uh, almost uh, same as the generalized autoregressive moving average model or the uh, model proposed uh, by Roche and Kriber in Eto, that is beta, beta autoregressive moving average model. So here in my model, instead of beta, I will be concentrating on inflated beta distribution. So the parameters of the models are estimated using conditional maximum likelihood estimation approach. And um, as there was no closed form uh, solution was uh, exist, so we have used non-linear optimization algorithm uh, where we have used LBFGS algorithm to estimate the parameters of the model. And uh, we have used Monte Carlo simulation study uh, to assess the finite sample performance of conditional maximum likelihood estimation. 
and we have used a real life example uh, by fitting this proposed model. So as I mentioned, we are uh, we are using here inflated beta distribution, which is a mixture of degenerate and beta distribution. So here omega is the mixture parameter, lambda is the lambda and rho are the distribution mean and precision parameters. So here z will take uh, z is equal to c uh, that um, represent whether either c will take value zero or one. And uh, f of z is the probability density function of a beta distribution here. So the mean and variance of inflated beta distribution is that is expectation of z is equal to omega c plus 1 minus omega into lambda and variance of z equal to 1 minus omega variance of lambda by rho plus 1 plus omega into 1 minus omega c minus lambda square where c can either take value 0 or 1 it depends on the data which we are considering. So uh, this is the density function of inflated beta distribution which I have renamed as a degenerate beta with the parameters lambda t rho and omega. So here ft minus 1 is the previous information set of the response series. When the and here when mixture parameter omega is equal to 0 that means when there is 0 or 1 is not included our inflated beta distribution will turn to beta distribution. So this is the proposed model and as I mentioned the structure is the same as generalized autoregressive moving average model. Here we are concentrating on the inflated beta distribution. So uh, g of is the link function. So since our data is lies between 0 and 1 where either 0 or 1 is included, we have considered the logistic link function. So here is this are the regressor variables. Betas uh, are the unknown parameters of the regressor variable. Phi i is the autoregressive parameters with order p and phi j's are the moving average parameters with order q. And u has been considered as a vector of unknown parameters with length k plus p plus q plus 2. So, so, so this is the mean response estimate. So it depends on the whether either 0 is included or 1 is included. So for the application part, as I mentioned, I have concentrated on the bacteria E. coli resistant to different antibiotics. So as I'm, uh, I'll be concentrating on uh, four antibiotics here for the year uh, January 2011 to December 2019. So this data has been modeled using region beta arma model and analysis has been carried out using the software R. So this is uh, the descriptive statistics of the data which I've used. So you have, I can see here for the first two antibiotic, the resistant rate include one, whereas for the remaining two antibiotic, the resistant rate include zeros. So this is the time plot for the antibiotic amoxicillin clonic acid and cefuroxim. And here uh, you can see that there is a change point appearing uh, in the year 2015 that is a change from the testing method from a manual testing me method to uh, automated testing method. So that has been considered as um, regressor variables in the model which has been considered as a dummy variable as 1 and 0 which is uh, before uh, changing the testing method and after changing the testing method. Similarly the time plot for the uh, antibiotic uh, CSL and meropenem. So as I mentioned, there is a change point in the year 2015. So on the basis of ACF and PACF plot, it is difficult to decide on the order for P and Q. So what I have done here is I have considered uh, order P is equal to 1 to 12 and Q is equal to 1 to 12. The combination of P and Q has been um, has been fitted to the uh, model and depends on the Akeka information criteria. The order has been finalized. 
and uh, once I decided on the uh, order uh, depends on the IKK information criteria, I have again refitted the, the model to the data and considered the uh, variables which are significant. And then have uh, plotted sample autocorrelation function to look for whether residuals follows white noise assumption or not. So uh, this is the ACF block for the residuals for the uh, antimicrobial amoxicillin clonic acid and saproxim. So we can see here it follows white noise assumption. Here it is not exactly we can say that it follows white noise assumption, but we can um, there is a approximately uh, it follows a white noise assumption. So this is the estimated and forecasted resistance rate for the E. coli to the antimicrobial amoxicillin clonic acid and sufroxine along with the forecasted values. Similarly for other two antibiotics. So from this uh, application part, we can conclude that the resistant rate for the antimicrobial amoxicillin clonic acid and cefiroxim, it is almost 60% and 80%, which is a major concern to look upon. So this result suggested to have an appropriate use of antibiotic and extra care to be taken by the healthcare delivery system to strengthen antimicrobial policy and standardized treatment guidelines and to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, it is important to include E. coli pathogen as a specific indicator to minimize antibiotic resistance. And um, as a major part of this research is, I have provided an Arshani application. So uh, this is the link for the Arshani application. Once you click on this link, So probably because I am on presentation mode, uh, it is not going to the website. But uh, let me give a glimpse uh, of this Arshani application. So once you click on this uh, 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 link, it will direct you to the page. So this is the Degenerate Beta Arma app. So this app is applicable when the data is in the interval 0, 0,1, where either 0 or 1 is included. So I have given a icon that is click me. So uh, once this article get published, I'll be providing a link over here. So which can direct to the published paper. So people can have a better understanding on the theoretical background of this app. So you have to upload a response file and then the regressor file. So currently I have uh, kept it in, in the CSV form. So you have to provide a response uh, Excel sheet and the regressor separately. So once you uh, upload the sheets over here, it will ask you uh, like to uh, select on response variable. So you will be having multiple uh, response variables. You have to select uh, of your interest the variables and then you have to select the regressor variable. Regressor variable multiple you uh, can uh, select here. So in my case, I have only one variable which represents a um, uh, change in testing method. So I have considered only one regressor variable here. Then you have to enter a regressor values to forecast the response series. So you have to manually type here the regressor values here. As in my case, it is uh, only the dummy variables which I have provided. So I mentioned it as 111 one, one here. Then you have to select a range, whether uh, your data is lies between 0, 0,1, where either 0 or 1 is included. And once you gave all the information, you have to click on the run button. Once you click on the run button, it will provide you a uh, ACF plot of the residual to decide on whether uh, this model fit well to your data or not. Similarly, it will provide you the forecasted series for the information you have provided here. If you are looking for um, three time points, it will give you a three forecasted value for the future. Similarly, if you're looking for six time points, it will provide it for the uh, six uh, values for the future. 
So here, uh, once you give the data, uh, your response table, which is you can uh, see here in the previous table, uh, previous uh, slides, uh, your response table, regressor table, and time series plot will be generated once you upload the data itself. So once you click on the run button, it will create only the ACF plot of the residual and forecast the series. And um, it may take a few time, a few minutes uh, to generate this uh, plot, residual plot, and the forecasted series. As it, it need to look for the combination of p comma q, and on the basis of uh, AIC, it will uh, give that select the best model, and using that best model, it will fit uh, that particular model to the uh, data. So uh, these are the few references uh, which I have considered in this uh, article. Thank you.